happy days and welcome everybody to, of course, another fantastic um, set extreme business set mind series. I jumped again there with my words with, of course, myself, Paul Rees, and the striped shirt, amazing man, all the way from Ireland. Actually, not born and bred in Ireland, but certainly a big chunk of Ireland, Lee Tenny Ware. I mean, you do, you, as soon as you cross the border, if I went into Ireland and I said, you know, Lee Tenny Ware to border control, they'd say, I don't need to look your passport in your camp. That's how famous this chap is. He's the Elvis Presley of Ireland in the business world. Absolutely. And I have a, I am, I have a subject that we're going to bring in today, Lee, that's going to be pointy, aggressive. And guess what? We're going to ruffle some feathers with this in the business world, for sure, because it's like a hidden acceptance that shouldn't be there and it's called the non-referral business absorber let me let me explain what i mean by this now i'm going to come from a coaching point of view which is my world like business design in my world and i put these categories i put these these particular kind of clients into the high income high maintenance place they pay a fortune to be a pain in the neck now this might sound harsh again but it's fact a lot of coaching, a lot of any time of development, really, the best referrals are the internal referrals, are people that have had a lot of success from the from the from taking on what is their accountability within any kind of coaching, mentoring, designing, you know, self-development or development from from a place they have paid in order to experience that. Now, we do have a sticky connection here again, I'm afraid, because the weather is terrible all over the world. So we will be jumping. And here's the thing is that I have spoke to hundreds of, of people in the development world, I'll use that for a word, that, that suffer with the same issue. And, and again, I'm going to jump in here. I had a meeting with a chap who, who owns men, who owns gyms um, all over the country. And he said to me, Paul, it's commonplace within the gym industry fitness industry to have a 54 percent non-turn-up membership so people will pay membership every month and just don't bother turning up which means he has a 54 percent depletion in internal internal referrals because if they don't care about going to the gym and paying they are not going to refer the gym now bring this back bring this concept right back into any form of development now lee you you know, a big chunk of what you do for a living is you excel business owners in themselves in their business in life. Big chunk of what I do is I design and create legacy businesses, which means we're very reliant on the return of accountability, the return of call to actions within our work to have a success rate. And any form of development or any form of internal development can be manipulated in any given way it wants by the payer, by the receiver, by the recipient of that work, which effectively makes them a non-referral business as well, but because they are in an ecosystem, they are paying for something, they are they are not responding to, which means they cannot refer it out because they're not responding to it themselves. They just think, as long as I pay, then I must be growing. That's just like saying, so long as I take my steroids, I don't have to go to the gym, but I must be getting fitter. And that's, we got almost steroid absorbing development people that don't go to the gym and follow through. They become non-referrals because they are not referring to themselves in their own business. If you can't refer to yourself, you can't see yourself, you cannot become a referral, a, a referral out for that person that's helping you grow. That's what I mean by that. No, I got it. No, I got it. Um, I love when you start, you see, yeah. when you, every time you think, right, let me just process that. It's beautiful. This depends. Let's take it into, say, the leadership category. Yeah. A lot of people want to lead, but, Sometimes they participate by the, from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. So even if you take that back to the army type thing, take back because right, where this is a very personal concept, yeah, yeah. As in, why do people get in their own way and they sabotage themselves really? You know, wow. pay money for not that like for not participating whether it's in the gym or whatever. But if you take it back to the government type of leadership, yeah. And you can see this in history, so this is my opinion. You got 
leaders, yeah, that will have a row with other leaders and then send our kids to war to fight their argument. Wow. And they, they're our leaders that tell us to be autonomous. And then we have to sort all the problems out because of their disagreements. Mm -hmm. Because some want control or want to edge in. I mean, it, I mean, and just take it into the real world. We got, and you might say, how's this related business? It's all related business. It's like the word leader is not telling other people what to do. Nor is it creating acts, which they perceive as laws, to tell other people what to do. So when other people won't do what they want them to do, they bring an act in. And a lot of people think an act is a law, but it's an act of parliament. And why have I took it political? Because the form of leadership we know in the modern world today comes from the army and navy. Orders. And that, that's what a lot of people think is leadership. So if I say it has to be done, and then you've got people getting paid to do what they're told. Now, yeah. bear in mind, in, the only difference in the army and navy industry is if they don't do what they're asked, there are severe consequences. In the trenches, if they are sent into no man's land, yeah, on the battlefield, and they get halfway across or a quarter way across or won't go across, they in in the the written in the First World War, they shot them. Their own men shot them if they turned around to come back. Or the best case scenario, they were court martialed, then put in prison or hung or shot. So there were severe consequences for not doing the do. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're you're a business leader, yeah, that you have to make sure people do the do. Because if they don't, there ain't going to be no success. So if they're sitting in their head, in the imposter, overthinking, whether they're, if they're part of a team, yeah, the consequences are they can hide for so long. They can hide for so long. They can misdirect for so long. They can use smoke and mirrors. They can use environment, government, situations, economy for so long. But all the time they use those things, all they are is excuses. Whether it's a recession, it's an excuse. And you can't say that. Inflation's high. Yeah, it's happening. That's in the real world. But the entrepreneur, the true leader, has to get past that. Yeah. Same as the person that goes out on the battlefield. Yeah, there's bullets and shells coming at you. you still got to go. Yeah. And if you don't go, you're going to pay. By going, you're going into danger. But... The, the the structure, yeah, is that if you don't go, you're still going to have the danger. So they they the army and navy put it right. I mean, it doesn't matter. You go back right through history, you'll see it. And if you disagree too much and go against the army or go against the crown or the government, that's treason. So you can stamp your feet all you like. They're going to say that they hold you to account. Now, you might think, why have I framed it that way? Because if you actually look at it like that in your own world, and you are the person, you are the person giving you the orders, but you won't go into no man's or no woman's land, you won't even get out of the trenches. You want to sit there and look, wait for the right time. Think about it, overthink about it. You're thinking it's like school, that, well, I, I've got it. 68%. 68% is better than no percent at all. Because mm -hmm. if you don't get out of the trench and get out into the real world and, and make, like, do, to do the do, you'll be better off to perform at 68% because if by not performing at all, you're performing at, performing at minus zero, never mind zero. Wow. So every and they most of them 99% know what to do they're just either scared of making a mistake yeah. and it's not investment I mean how many people invest in their business nowadays they invest in their brand and their logo and they think that's the business no when they're investing in themselves that's the biggest investment they can make of all but when they make that investment and just take the steroids or don't go to the gym at all and then they go, oh, yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in a group. I'm in this. I'm in that. And but they, and what they're waiting for is somebody else to lift the weights for them. Yes. And, yes. yeah, I went to the gym today and Paul lifted the weights for me. 
Yeah, they're waiting for those aha moments rather than getting in and doing the do and getting the aha moments quicker. And I know that from running groups. Yeah. Can, I, can I share something there, Lee? Because you, you on that note, it just really sparked something in my mind. So coming to the end of this year, I'm going to say that um, I have, I'm going to max out this year. At the end of this year, I'll max out. God, I would have had 60 clients this year for myself. But I'm going to say, and I put this out there, and this could be a risk to me, but I'm going to put it out there because it's fact. I'm going to say that probably out of 60 clients, 25% of those clients are going to be referral clients for me. And here's why only 25% are, because the other, the other 75% of those clients did not, and no matter how hard I pushed, Without becoming, mm. without becoming exhausted in myself, because remember, I have to keep energy mm. for all my clients. And I say the other seventy-five percent, Lee, they did not follow through. Didn't follow through with the with the um, accountability that they were paying for mm. in the program, with which meant that if they are, if their success rate rate is lesser than I would expect, then I know the referral rate is going to deplete with that. So as hard as I worked with them refusing to look at the truth as to why they weren't responding to the program meant that the sacrifice for me is I've lost a referral percentage there because they have a lesser outcome in, in what I would expect in a success rate. You know, you don't go to Tesco's and then pick something up and walk out without paying. You pay to enjoy the product you've had. You make the most of the product. You then become a referral. So, you know, it's, it's, if you pay for something. No, I get what you're saying. And the thing is with it, and I suppose this is the piece, and this is, I suppose, in my head. I'm not saying I'm right. You're always trying to find their go button. Now, I was out last night. And I think this is a good example of it. I think, and because I, so I went back in my day, all my friends growing up, all my friends, and I, and I didn't have a lot of friends, this English accent. In Savalana, I was like, yeah, right, wrong accent, yeah, wow. wrong timing. Wow. And I've got a handful of friends that I would have known growing up. They're all entrepreneurs, all business owners. Yeah. Weird that. That all of us turned out are owning our own business mm -hmm. and with employees. Weird that. So, because you think if it was one leader, the others would be followers, which means one would be the boss and the other five would be the employees. But all of us, yeah, all became entrepreneurs and good business people. Mm -hmm. And I find that quite strange. Not not one or two out of the, the group, all of us. So this is what I think happens inside people because it's an inside problem. It's not an outside problem. An outside problem, you can get other people to do it. Henry Ford wasn't a mechanic. He didn't have to make engines, didn't have to, didn't have to put a wheel on a car. I don't know how many wheels he did put on a car, but I doubt very few of at all, because what he was was a leader. But if the ones he led didn't do anything, then it don't matter if you're giving all the instructions. So what's their go button? Now, sometimes their go button is pressure. Most people's go button is pressure. Otherwise, they watch Netflix or overcomplicate something mm -hmm. to make out they've done everything. Yeah. Wow. But they haven't done nothing at all. That's they overcomplicate big. something, yeah, to say they've done everything but done nothing at all. I was in Galway last night. We went down to the Christmas market, Ross and I with the kids and that. And there was no traffic, and it's in a square. The very, it's no traffic's alive, very little traffic. But there was people standing at the pavement at waiting for the green man and they had to walk 50 foot to get to the other side where the market was and there was no buses cars bikes nothing and they're standing there waiting for it to go beep 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 beep, beep, beep and the green man you know, to go and then start flashing and it'd be amber or go to red and i crossed the road with my kids and ross and they're standing there. And William said to me, who's 10, 
why are they standing? I said, they're waiting for the green man. He said, well, why didn't we wait for the green man? I said, because we don't need the lights because they're traffic lights. You don't need lights when there's no traffic. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, you yeah, don't need you. traffic lights when there's no traffic. And I mean, I can use my common sense. I can use my eyes, my ears. I can look. Yeah, I can use my senses. Nothing coming. And I'm, I'm choosing as a father to walk kids across the street. Yeah. And I've got adults that I don't know stand at the pavement. Some people are waiting for the green man. And I don't know whether it's an education thing. Or, but if they're not going to decide, because if they keep waiting for the green man or the green woman or the big, 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 something has to happen for me to be successful. Yeah, you have to wake up and go, I'm crossing. Wow. I'm crossing. And if they shoot, you go like out with Chino. Hey, I'm crossing here. Yeah. you got to say, this is, it's about success. Success waits for no man or woman. Yeah. But, so many men and women wait for success. Lee, look, when you when we think about this, you know, we what what we what I'm you know coming back to myself is I have to have the present client now. I don't work with anybody unless they're not present okay, okay. within themselves because then I know instantly they are no they're a non referral for me, and I also I'm not going to learn nothing from them. I only no, work and with the worst of it is from. when when you've got. Too many people have got too many reasons. And some or the internet connection there. Too many people have got too many reasons and some make so much sense. Hmm. Is the failure reason. To have all the answers and not have success means you haven't got all the answers to have success. But too many people go, I know, I know, I know. I know. You go, well, how about, well, I'm stuck with this thing. Yeah, have you thought about X? Yeah, I know about that. Right, yeah, you might know. Two plus two is four. You might know that piece of information. But if you're not complying and utilising that information and you're not putting your biology and psychology into action, then perhaps you're being held back by an emotional trauma. You'd be surprised that many people haven't got the emotional currency because they're too scared, too worried, too fearful of getting it wrong or what other people will think of them if they did get it wrong. And a leader does not think that way. And wow. if you're thinking that way, then the way, if you're going to take anything from this, you can take it off. Oh, they're having a go at me. Yeah, you can take it that way. You don't even know who's going to listen to it. But if you're going to do one thing for yourself and listen to this, Sit up inside and take notice. This is your life. You breathe for you. You think for you. You decide for you. How much of it are you going to waste thinking about success rather than working for success? Yeah. Because inside, if there's a part, you can overthink, over worry, over concern. You don't need to know everything. It's not written in stone. You can start carving the first letter and you've got to get into movement. And I, I like. And it's amazing when you tell people, even the step-by-step, -step, paint by numbers route to success, how many can co complicate. Well, I thought I'd put number 15 when number four was, because yeah. it's orange too. Yeah, it don't work that way. You can't jump from one to 15. You have to go one, two, three, four, five. And at each place, and you can't jump through each number quickly. The gap between the numbers is the numbers. The gap between the notes in music is the music. The gap between your heartbeat is your life. The gap yeah. between your breath is your life. If you don't use that gap, and all you're going to do is wait for the green man or the green woman or the beep, beep, beep to get moving, then today get moving. What is it you don't know? That's intellect. But is it in this timeline? Is it something you don't know that's, well, in three months' time, I'm going to need to know this. And I'm not moving forward until I've sorted that bit. That ain't success. That's failure. Yeah. What you do is you get moving today. And the closer, because the gap between the numbers is the number. You write down one, two, three, four on a piece of paper and say to somebody, what's that? And they go, one, two, three, four. You go, no, 1,234. And what makes the difference between 1,234 and one, two, three, four is the slight difference between the gap of the numbers. And I know this. I've tested it on stage. got a flip chart out, written the number up big. Can anybody tell me what's on that? And if you can, write it down on a piece of paper, but write it down in words. Write it down in words, not numbers. S say, write what you see. 
Yeah, write it down in words, and I'll say, right, you ready? Yeah, and you got like I put time on it, so you've got 30 seconds to write down what you see. So I'll, and I've already got it written on the board, yeah, or I've written, write it around the back, and I'll turn it around and say, right, write what you see, and they write it down. I'll say, right, who thinks they've got the right answer? Yeah, if you do, stand up and everybody stands. And I'll go, right, what have you got written down there? Bear in mind, you've got to turn it around and show everybody. Show it to the person beside you. Show it Show it to the person behind you. Brilliant. Can anybody tell me what you've got written down? Yeah. Anybody? And somebody put his pad up. Right, what was it? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Say what you see. I said, brilliant. Everybody give me a round of applause. <clears throat> yeah. Now, who else? Yeah. If you all wrote that down, who else? Put that. Yeah, and he'll put the arm up. I said, brilliant. Everybody's written down one, two, three, four. Then I either flip the next sheet out. I said, that's what's written on a piece of paper. 1,234. Look how wrong you are. Say what you see. And you, you think I'm tricking you. This is how one, two, three, four looks on a piece of paper. And this is how one, two, three, uh, 1,234 looks on a piece of paper. Yeah. The gap is different. Wow. The difference between success and failure is the gap is different. If you spend too much time in the gap, overthinking something, mm. and when you're overthinking, you're not doing, or you spend too much time doing something and not thinking, yeah. well, it's both ways, is you that you are in the land of failure. Don't matter how long you think about it, the longer you think about it, you're in, in failure. It's easy. If you don't know something today, yeah, and in, in our day, yeah, and nowadays it's at the tip of your fingertips. You don't know something in the old days. You go to the library. Yeah, you go down and you sit down for an hour or two. You do a bit of research, and I take it from somebody who can't read or write properly. But I used to go to the library. Yeah, yeah. Now I had to years ago. Yeah, I had to go and I had to plumb. I'm going back a lot of years. I had to plumb 17 apartments. And they were re-plumbed. Some of them, they were just literally like plumbed like caravans. Wow. Yeah, a coal feed with a gas heater. I had to re-plumb those. And now I didn't have the money at the time to be able to get somebody in to do it. So I got a plumber, and this is a true story, and sat him at my kitchen table, made him a cup of tea, and asked him all the questions that I had in my head where I knew, oh, and I wanted the answers because the answers gave me the, the ability to move. Yeah. So I said to him, I haven't got <clears throat> some of the flats, haven't got an attic because there's a flat roof. How can I get an expansion pipe? How can I have an immersion tank without an expansion pipe? Because they're all gas eaters and I want to get a gas thing. He said, and uh, <clears throat> he said, you won't. He said, you won't be able to do that. So I said, all right. Now, he told me, and he was a plumber, I couldn't do it. I worked out how I could do it, yeah, where where I didn't need an attic to have an expansion board. And we, and we re-plumbed, or I did, 17 apartments. Now, we had an electrician here. <clears throat> we went from single face to three face, yeah, because we were upgrading the property, 17 apartments. And... We were at the end of the 89, I think it was the 89, 90 recession, Black Wednesday. I mean, people talk about recessions now, Black Wednesday. I mean, I saw people that were really successful, people who owned helicopters, fast cars like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Aston Martins, wiped out of business wow. that quick. Yeah, oh, yeah, they put the, the interest rates went up like, to 25% on some of the borrowing overnight, and they compounded it. Because what they wanted to do was pull the assets in, and not not the like. So the point I'm trying to make to you is when you see it, and we, like a lot of people, the last recession was nothing. I mean, in Ireland they made out it was everything. It was nothing to Black Wednesday. I saw people that were multi-millionaires become pauper sleeping in cars. Now I was lucky; I wasn't overextended, but it was tight in those times. I had a lot of assets. And I didn't want to go and borrow, so I had to utilize the asset to pay for itself. A lot of people that are in this investor-ready mindset nowadays, nothing wrong with that. But investors know what to ask you. A lot of people want a free ride. They want to jump on the conveyor belt, and they don't even want to be the hamster that turns the conveyor belt. They want to just stand there and make it, you know, that's all right, Paul's going to do that. 
So the point I'm making to you is, is to be in a position where you know you haven't got the necessary funds to do something and find a way to do it. I had to get a free phase board design. Just the design cost me 1,500 quid from the layout, the design of how the power was going to be distributed. And the board was 14,500 to be made. That's just something to screw on the wall where all the, the power comes in and it's divided and split out. And when they told me it was 14,500, this is the electrician and the one of the head blokes from the ESB, which was the electricity board, he said, that's how it's got to be done. I said, all right, how much is that going to cost? And he said, I've been on the CT, this is the electrician. He said, it's going to be 14,500. I said, yeah, I ain't paying 14,500. And they got it all laid out on a piece of paper. Wherever. I said, why do we need that? And they said, because of this, this, this. I said, why can't we do this? Now, at the end of it, I'd redesigned the board and I wasn't an electrician. <laughs> yeah, and the bloke, the head bloke from the ESB, the electricity board, went, um, are you an electrician, Lee? I said, no, I'm not an electrician. He said, well, how are you able to work that out? And I said, because I'm a businessman. Yeah. I don't want to pay 14 and a half grand for something I can get for four and a half. And I actually took 14 and a half thousand down to four and a half thousand. Wow. I'll give you a good example of it. I had a meeting the other day with a very, very, very clever bloke who's working with a very, very big international company that does about 300 million a year. That company owns um, a selection of other businesses outside of their 300 million a year business. Their 300 million a year business is an international business grow by 20% a year. And they've got other businesses like um, hotels and <clears throat> uh, different other things. I won't mention it because I'm not talking about the company, but on our side of the world, I'll mention it, everybody will know who I'm talking about. And he was brought in to help them with their brand. Not their main brand, the big company, but other sub-businesses they've got. And he said, I've, he said, I've sat there, he said, I've cancelled over 300,000 of subscriptions per annum. One being their email marketing software. 16,000 a year. He said, and they said, you can't, he said, is it a, a meeting, like, is it not advisor meeting, board meeting, whatever. And you can't do that. That's specifically for, ho that, that email marketing software is specifically for hotels. And he said, no, it's not. And he said, it's email marketing software. But you've been sold it because it's specifically for hotels, because you're a hotel, because they realise hotels have the money. Yeah. Let's look at its flow. Let's look at its system. There's another one that's going to cost you like 1,500 quid a year that does more than the one that's specifically for hotels yeah, or specifically for chiropractors or specifically mm -hmm. for tax advisors. He said, so... He said, I've cancelled almost 300,000 worth of that's subscriptions to run the business. He said, I replaced it with some of the team and them researching that for, he said, for 30,000. Wow. So 90% because people were trying to throw money at the problem. Ah. And that comes back to what you said. Money won't solve a problem. Money's a tool. It's a hammer. It's a saw. Yeah, it's a level. It's a measuring tape. Money is a tool. But money, money don't measure itself. Money doesn't grow itself. Yeah, money mm -hmm. won't cut itself. Yeah, it's cash flow. To have flow, you have to have movement. It's currency. For currency, there's going to be terminals. Current of the sea. Yeah. To have sales, you need a ship. To have relationships to have movement you need sales on a ship spelled differently yeah. the word sales in business comes from the spanish and portuguese trading ships you had to have sales on the ship so you could but first of all you had to hook your client and get them on board mm. so you could get your current of the sea yeah. Because your cash needed to be flowing, yeah. so you could get from your multiple streams of income to put the money in the bank, the river bank. Commerce and currency in business is it's it's flowing language. Yeah. We me... haven't got cash flow, but the last bit of it is, see, if we aren't building the right relationships, 
then what you will have to do is abandon your ship. Because it's all about movement. It's all about flow. It's yeah. all about coach. So if you're thinking in your head, overthinking, imposter, or you're holding yourself, if you have not moving, you're better off to have one sail up yeah. and be moving. But if you're just procrastinating and being busy, well, I, can't, I can't do it today, Paul. I've got 10 meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are they productive meetings? At least 50-50 split. Are they 50% where there's an opportunity for going? Yeah, I'm not ready for that. Yeah, I'm not ready. But I have got some sales meetings today. And at the end of the day, how many did, how many sales did you make? I yeah. didn't make any sales. And it doesn't bother me because I'm not ready yet. So why did you have the sales meetings? Why did you burn the opportunity to bring cash in? Yeah. Or why didn't you have, well, I'm not having any sales meetings until I've worked out this problem. Right. When is this problem relevant? Three months from now. So you're now putting off your income, your cash flow, mm. because you've got a problem three months from now. And in, in, back to what you said, that's what I think's happening. I think they're putting off. So there's three timelines, and this is the last bit of it. You've got the past, you've got the present, you've got the future entrepreneurs opportunity based people are in the future mm -hmm. in its shiny object and excitement nothing wrong with that i spend time there myself you come back from the future to present and you look at your you look at the opportunity and you see is it in line with the future you want then you go back into your past and you assess from your experience how this opportunity solve some of the problems or challenges you've had in the past and how from your history and wisdom that it's going to be profitable. Yeah. Well, internet, internet. Education framework in place and you put a business plan in place and all <sighs> one's profit, one's procrastination. Which one do you want? Yeah. Overthinking. Yeah. Worry, concern, doubt, fear it means you haven't gone back into your past and looked at your wisdom. If you haven't got it in your past, go to somebody who has, or go to the library, go yeah. to YouTube, go to Google, go to Google Books. The content's free. Yeah, it's the biggest problem. Yeah, and I guarantee you in your business, the biggest problem, the number one problem in your business. Look in the mirror and you'll see the number one problem. Wow, Lee, yeah. let me jump in because use what I've got from this. I realized this year that I had, as I say, 60 clients I'm maxing out that. I realized 25% of those clients were highly successful in their accountability within their work with me. That realization is that 75% of my clients, although I'm going to say got through the program, um, benefited from the program, they didn't benefit where they should have been, which, which sits into this in themselves, which means my next year is going to actually reduce that 75 percent and it to increase my referral rate and i'm you know what i'm reading here is everybody measure the non-referral success rate the non-referral success well, let me take rate. a bit of accountability for you and all yeah i've got i've got this problem at the minute probably about 70 people <laughs> 70 people i mean that's just in one area that's massive and now, oh i know and I can see the problem. I can even got statistical data. And they're the problem. Yeah. But if I say that, then I become the problem. So me as a coach, I have to find the button to press for them, for the green man to go or the green woman to go from red or amber to green. So I, I'm, I'm messaging every. I mean, today I've got a message going out to some. This is what you've got to do to do this. And if you're not going to do this, don't do it. Come for this. Wow. But then I don't that, want to say that... that. And anyone that, and some that will watch this, I don't want to send that message. I don't want to be made to feel uncomfortable to send a message. Because if I don't send that message, I'm actually buying into the procrastination. Wow. And I become now the leader that says it's okay to sit on your laurels. But then they become. The obstacle, then it's, I can't believe he sent that message. And I'll be sending a real nice, wholesome message to say, get your ass up, stand up on the inside and do the do. But I I've won't be able to say it like that. I'd love to say, oh, you, you've had almost, you've had almost four weeks to fill in one piece of paper. On my side, you know how frustrating it is? But I'm the first person they got on the phone for. Do you know X, Y, Z? Do you want this? And they want you to give it their best, but they won't even fill in a short questionnaire. At what point 
do you stop babysitting and start coaching? And that's something I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, I, know, I, I don't breastfeed anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't bottle feed my wife breastfed. I don't bottle feed. I don't change nappies and I don't burp. <laughs> if if they want the if they want success and they say there's a price to pay for success, you know what the price is? Stop overthinking and start doing. Wow. Get over the fear, yeah, and because the fear is internal. If you're going to sit there in your own feelings of the future that takes away your present and takes away your success, you really need a wet fish around the year, and you need to go to a fishmonger's today and literally smack yourself around. Because if you can't look back in the last three months, six months, nine months for a year, or the last five years ago, I've been doing this forever. Yeah, I can't understand why I'm not successful. Well, there's your, there's the reason. Yeah, the key to success is you. Yeah. And well, I don't know what to do. But how long have you been trying to do it for? I mean, if you were learning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, mm -hmm. and after a year you couldn't count, would you think there was something wrong? <laughs> Perhaps it's the way you're feeling or thinking about it. So then, if you can't get your head in the game, then go to somebody and go right. This is what I keep doing. What do I need to do? Yeah. You need to do number one. Yeah. Well, I don't think I need to do number one. I'm not. I'm not yeah. Do number one. Yeah. I know how to do number one. I think you're disrespecting me. Then show me that you can do number one yeah. to a high quality. Yeah. Go and do that. And then we'll see. Right, I'll show you. Brilliant. You've done number one. Now do number two. Yeah. Why do I need to do Because I need to know where you are. If you can't do number one, I know how to do one. Yeah, you telling me and you do it are two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Linford Christie or Usain Bolt, yeah, fastest man in the world. <clears throat> yeah. How do you know that? Because everybody saw him do it. I'm successful. Let's see you do it. Because yeah. in your head, yeah, that's medication. You're dramatizing it. Visualize all you like, but put some action with it. Wow. Affirm yourself all you like, yeah, but let other people be able to visualize it. Yeah. How do they visualize it? They watch you doing it. Wow. But Listen, if you're not going to get out and be seen, if you're not going to stand up and be counted, yeah, you're never going to no man's land or no woman's land because no man's and no woman's land, that's where success is made. Yeah. It ain't made in the trenches hiding, yeah? But it's not as scary in no man's and no woman's lands as it is. It's waiting for the... Everybody's standing waiting for a green light. And you go, what are you waiting for? I can't go until it goes beep, 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 and I can't go until that little man goes green. All oh, right, why is that? Well, that's the rules, isn't it? Well, you see, there's no traffic. I mean, would you stand? And I mean, you've got to hear this. Would you stand at 3 a.m. in the morning at a traffic light waiting for it to go beep, 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 or the green man to go? But I swear to you that many in their own life are waiting for beep, 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 and the green man or woman to show up. Yeah, and, and they've been waiting for far too long. There's always a gap. You and then, and then, and they, and they wonder why then. They are a non-referral, and they wonder why they don't get referred. Maybe how can you refer them? They're a non-referral, as in they're not giving us business. But how can you refer somebody? You can only refer them to the number they're at. Yeah. It's a bit like William at 10. You can't, you, what <laughs> number comes out of 3 within 507? Yeah. I'm not going to give him my books to do. Yeah. Can you sort my vat out? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. So people have got to realise if they're not showing up or they're complaining, and that's the one they're very good at. Yeah. Because what they do is they try and find their little herd. Yeah, I think you can do it another way, don't you? Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, I don't like the way you said that. Well, brilliant. That's not a problem. Do you know what I know? Is I know that they're the ones that won't do. They find every reason to triangulate their emotional lack. Yeah. Yeah, and it's nothing wrong with it. We all have it, but... As you get success, do you know what success truly is? It's not money. It's not the big houses and not the big car. That ain't success. Because anyone that's truly got it, where it hasn't been left, left to them, yeah? Do you know where the people, successful people can have a good conversation? It's because they got past their triggers. Yeah. Successful. Not all of them. Some were very successful, lucky, and they, they weren't rounded. But most, 80% are successful people. When they have a conversation, it's so real, yeah. so genuine, and they know that you're not trying to hear, yeah. well, I've got three million five hundred and one pounds. <laughs> you only got three million. We got out of the playground a long, long time ago. Yeah. So 
you, success is getting past the feelings that's denying you success. Wow. That's success. And Lee, we, we're going to call it there because I have so taken so much of your time and I'm sure that you have to rearrange calls whilst we were in the middle of this. I want to I say, did either arrange one. That's what I did there. I, I moved saw. it forward. Thank you so much. And all you people on YouTube, listen to this. No like, subscribe, do comment in. We're always there for you. This has been an amazing, amazing deep dive today. It certainly has set the bit to take from it, and the bit to take from it, it's not criticism. Yeah. It's realisation. Yeah. Yeah. It's the reason we're having this is so we don't have to have it with people we work with or people that is listen to it. Don't take it as criticism. Take it as realisation. What should I have done today? that I didn't do. Yeah. And take that wisdom into tomorrow. Tomorrow, I ain't doing what I've done yesterday because mm -hmm. that's success. What have you been putting off for the last month? Because everybody knows what they've got to do. Well, I'm not quite sure how to do it. Just do it. Get it wrong. Because by not doing it, you're already getting it wrong. Happy days. Dear Lee, sir. thank you so much. I'm going to catch you this time next week. And we're going to say bye for now and boom!